Hey, all praises to you. How about me? I was shy. The bond is possible. The elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to you, Akim out there. You sincere Akim. Uh, the hopeful elect. Shalom on to you. Uh, real quick, I was just uh, going through the videos. Man, the spirit has brothers on fire. Uh, just, just, just uh, a, a beautiful to see. Uh, you know, the, the prophets turning up, that heat turning up. You know, in this place, you can feel it. You know, you can feel it crumbling. You can feel it falling down. As the head apostle coined it, this is the year of prophecy. But I just want to bring out a couple of scriptures. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 1 and 8. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been which this is talking about the spirit according to uh, the revelations of King Solomon. The king that ha the thing, it's a lot here, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see this is new, it hath been already of old time which was before us? Yeah, and that, uh, that statement rings true, man. I was thinking about it. Because um, you got a movie coming out, Ready Player One, which this is a this is a movie basically. Matter of fact, let me let me pull that movie up. Let me pull that up. Salaki. Yeah, you Salaki. I had to pause it real quick, but you had a movie, Ready Player One, come up. Uh, this I think it's coming out next week or whatever. What the theme of the movie is. Um, you have to connect into this virtual system because the, the person who created it, you know, if you find some sort of object or something, you win a certain amount of money. And the characters in this particular system are all from the 80s. And, uh, and, and, and just like now, man, you're starting to see a lot of things from the 70s, which I, I wasn't around for the 70s. But you're starting to see a lot of things from the 70s come back. You know, you, you got like the, the Bruno Mars funk music. Some of the clothing styles that the women are wearing, uh, some of the hairstyles, all of that stuff comes back around. And so, uh, when 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 the, the different elders and apostles talk about going to reincarnation, you know these these um, if you really believe in the scriptures, you're going to you're going to agree with that. And based on observation, you can see that everything comes back around, just like clothing styles. Clothing, uh, somebody in my family told me a long time ago, they said, look, man, every 20 years, the style is going to recycle, it's going to come back. And that's what Esau's doing. He's bringing back some of the old stuff. You got fucking, uh, what was it, Martin. They're trying, to, they're trying to put the Martin show back on the air. You know, they're trying to, um, what else is it? You know, Star Wars, all of this, this old stuff from the 70s and the 80s. They're trying to recycle that energy. So they can keep this place going, and they want us in it. Uh, Fahrenheit 451. That's a that's an old school movie as well from the 80s. But uh, the particular example I was looking at, Saddam Hussein. Where is it? Kind. Here we go. It says bringing Babylon back from the dead. You know, just proving once again Esau knows that this is Babylon. But now this particular example is talking about literal Iraq. But I'm going to just read a little bit from the article. You know, you can decide for yourself whether this uh, kind of proves what I'm saying. Babylon was one of the glories of the ancient world. Its, ha its walls of mystic hanging gardens listed among the seven wonders, right? The hanging gardens of Babylon. Founded about 4,000 years ago, the ancient city was capital of 10 dynasties, considered one of the earliest cradles of civilization and the birthplace of writing and literature. Right, right. Because we were in Babylon. In recent years, the Iraqi authorities have reopened Babylon to tourists. Blase, blase. But uh, basically, where's it at? Skip down. Yeah, they said, uh, some Iraqi archaeologists said that during the massive reconstruction project in the early 1980s, which I think the project was called the the uh, 
Babylon festival or something, Saddam began building a replica of the palace of Nebuchadnezzar II on top of the ruins of the ancient palace. Like Nebuchadnezzar, he wrote his name on many of the bricks with inscriptions such as, this was built by Saddam, son of Nebuchadnezzar, to glorify Iraq. After the Gulf War, Saddam began building a modern palace for himself on top of ruins in the style of a Sumerian ziggurat. When U.S. forces arrived in 2003, they occupied the palace, which lies adjacent to Nebuchadnezzar's palace. It was right next door and overlooks the Euphrates River and left our own mark. Today, a basketball hoop remains in Babylon, while you know, concertina wire left behind by the military is used to prevent visitors from climbing over a 2,500-year-old lion statue, an ancient symbol of the city. So basically, Saddam, yeah, Saddam, um, he, uh, he, he started rebuilding, and not just one, I found out he started rebuilding many palaces that were in Babylon, many of them. Let me see, where's the second case of this? Yep, I'm, I'm going to skip down through, but in this article it says he ordered one of three original palaces rebuilt. And it's the same thing. He he recreated it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you images too. Also, yeah, that that's the main point. I mean, you can always add, you know, do additional research. But yeah, basically, he put himself also on a coin next to um, the 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 picture of Nebuchadnezzar II. And I can't find the quote for some reason. They they took it down. You know, because they're, they're censoring all of the ancient information. But basically, he looked over um, the ruin. It was one that said Saddam looked over the ruins of Babylon, and he um, he he felt you know like he had been there before. Basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but that's that's exactly what happened. And of course, you know that they're, they're showing, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, like the scripture, just like King Solomon just said, there's no new thing under the sun. There's nothing new. Even the, the leaders that were under are, are nothing new. The wicked leaders are nothing new. And the spiritual leaders of Israel are, are nothing new. The men who we serve under. Uh, the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and the different heads. Those men are nothing new. You know, and that's uh, one thing you have to remember, being the truth, being a man of the Lord. These men are set up, and that's just the order that we're given. You know, these these men, just like these other other rulers, like Saddam himself, they were set up by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai to play whatever part they were set up to play. And then, you know, the men of uh, the nation of Israel were set up to play. Well, we're set up to play. But well, we're still all going to be joint rulers under Yahweh Shai. And this is uh oh, what's the good ones? These are the pictures of his palace, man. He, he redid the, the work of, of Nebuchadnezzar. That's that's crazy. Look at that. State of the art. You know, stonework. Put his bust up. Marble. Man. And that's the and this is compared to the stuff that we're going to see in the kingdom of heaven. This is nothing, you know. This is and then of course you know Esau, he had to come in there and set up his shit because these Edomites, like I said, they know they know uh, they know who, uh, they know what it is. These head Edomites, they know what it is. They know what's going. They know what the case is. You know they know what the prophecies are according to the scriptures. That's why they're living it up, man. They're living up. And, and luxuriousness and shit. They probably in you know one of his palaces right now in the Middle East, cause they pretty much shit on Iraq and now they want to go into Iran.
Yep. State of the art. So yeah, man, this dude, he spent, you know, millions of dollars and years and years. I think this place took about 20, 20 plus years to build up. You know, and there's, there's the throne. And that looks like a, a damn throne that Nebuchadnezzar would sit on. And then one more scripture, uh, Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. It's talking about Yahweh Shah, our Lord. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So, what does it mean when it said, they also which pierced him? Because this, uh, in Revelations, this is talking about the ends of days. Matter of fact, let me read verse 6 too. And hath made us kings and priests unto the Most High and his father, or, or to, excuse me, unto the Lord and his father, Salakia. Unto the Lord and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. But yeah, this is, this is prophecy. This is prophecy. Yeah, I'm going to read verse 1 too. So I should read this first to the revelation of Yahweh Shah, which the Most High gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So, yeah, these are these are revelations that, are, that will come to pass that are coming up. Behold, he coming with clouds. We know, you know, he's going to come back as a spiritual force on a not literally on a white horse, but in power. That's what the white horse represents. And so the only way that the people who could be, who could see him, and they also which pierced him, is if they're back on the earth now, somehow. And how are they back on the earth? Through reincarnation. Your spirit is energy, and your flesh goes back into the earth. You know, the flesh it rots. It, it becomes rotten. You know, as the older you get, the more you use it. Um... You know, the, the, the more you wear it out, because that's what that's the way it was willed um, by Yahweh Shem Yahushai. You know, some people's flesh age faster. You can kind of do things uh, to, you know, strengthen your flesh. But eventually, you know, when the time comes um, and you hit a, around that three score mark, you can leave this earth. You know, and if you're lucky, you know, you make it to you make it to see a hundred. But, I, you know, the scriptures say the earth is waxed, uh, waxed old. And at times we're living in, you know, we're eating all these chemicals, GMOs, uh, living more sedentary than they were in the ancient world. You might have to sit down in order to do your job. You know, if we if we to go with these bodies, man, we'll drop dead. I'll put it to you like that. So we, we're in need of a savior. But uh, with that being said, man, I hope that was edifying. All praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shah. Just uh, some interesting things that I found. Shalom. Stay tuned.